Tony Robbins is pretty much a one of a kind. Over three decades, he's changed millions of lives yes. as a peak performance coach and life strategist. He has worked, as you know, Charlie, with everybody from President Clinton to Mother, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of guy there. On his new show, Breakthrough, with Tony Robbins on OWN television network, Tony's a regular. He gets regular folks to take their lives back on track after some terrible setbacks, and we're pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you both. Uh, tell me what's the essence of the Tony Robbins message, and what will you be doing for these people? Um, I think we've all had moments in our life that matter more than others. Those sure. are moments when you've, you've been maybe struggling with something forever and all of a sudden something inside you clicks and everything changes. Where you won't tolerate what happened in the past, where you shift yourself, where you tell yourself the truth, where you take action. And I look at those moments as breakthroughs and I try to help people stack those breakthroughs into building kind of a new identity for themselves, a new way of mm -hmm. living. So in this show, there's so much stress in the world today. You just saw the pilot today. Yeah. He's kind of a metaphor for what you see. Six out of 10 Americans say they have extreme stress in their life today. And it's, you know, the economy has played a role, but it's also just the way that we live today. We have high expectations, huge demands, constant interruption to our lives. So what I did is I said, let's do a show where I show people you have no problems by contrast. Let's show people what human beings are capable of by finding extreme examples and turning them around in that rapid period of time. You know, it's so fascinating to watch you in action, Tony, because immediately you start speaking, the way you move, the way you speak, people pay attention. But you, yet you don't see yourself as a motivational speaker. For those of us who listen to you and follow you and believe it, I'm surprised. Well, only Why? because I think motivation is like a warm bath. I've never been that. I've always hated that term. <laughs> See, I mean, a warm I, bath's yeah, a good I thing. I knew that was it. Yeah. Know, but it's, it's a warm bath. Is, you should have one pretty regularly. Yeah. Right? Yes, yes, but yes. I really think that you have to find what drives you. And I also think you need strategy. You're, if you're all positive and you say, my goal is to see a sunset, and yeah. you start running east, I don't care how positive you are. Yeah, you have the wrong strategy. Yeah. But what I've done, like, for example, this first show we did, uh, the Oprah Net, 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 now, we took a group of people and I said, okay, find me an example that's really tough. And so my team found this couple where they went out for their first wedding and they go out to Mexico and they plan this huge thing and they jump in the swimming pool afterwards fully clothed. That's the tradition down there. Wife goes in, they take pictures, laugh. The husband goes in and there's blood. And next thing you know, they find out he's a quadriplegic instantaneously on his wedding night. Mm -hmm. And so I'm brought in when he's sitting literally in this room where he can't move, watching television, taking drugs each day. She's his full-time nurse. Yes. And he can't leave the house. She thinks she can't leave the house. And that's the end of their life. And my, my experience of life is I've met a lot of people who have been through unbelievable tragedy that are more alive than people who have able-bodied okay. opportunities, right? So I said, it's our story, it's the meaning, but I can't go in and say, listen, you're gonna have a great life, I'm six foot seven, everything works for, for me, how easy for me. I believe beliefs are weak substitutes for experience. So I give them the experience of not only getting him out of the house, but getting him to Fiji. The journey there is unbelievable for somebody who's a quadriplegic. They drop him to give you an idea. It's and you get him stuff. skydiving. Took him skydiving, took him playing murder ball. So it's like, if you're not familiar with murder ball, it's, it's basically rugby for quadriplegics and devices look like Mad Max. I got him doing things he hadn't done when he was able body. And so you look at him today, a year and a half later, he called me recently, they're out camping, right? He's out <laughs> racing at, you know, his car, this car in the desert that he races with his elbows that he built. But look at you today, Tony Robbins. You've talked very candidly about your childhood. You had some tough times. You went, went through abuse. And I'm wondering what it taught you, what you learned from that, you. I think it gave me, uh, when you have experienced suffering, I, haven't, I didn't talk about this any time in my life until recently because mm -hmm. I work with a lot of kids now who've been, and adults, who've been abused. And if you just say, you can do it, yes. they doesn't understand unless you've been through it. Biography is not destiny. Yes. It doesn't matter what you, Oprah is one of your dearest friends in the yeah. world and loves yeah. you dearly. Probably the greatest example of that in the world. So I think what it does is when you've experienced suffering, you don't want anybody to suffer. Mm. When you've experienced suffering, you want to find the answers to turn things around. So it gave me unbelievable hunger and drive. And it also made me sensitive to what people are experiencing because I had to know what was going to happen next. I had to become a practical psychologist. And it's turned out well because it gave me skill sets and caring that you know, over three and a half decades I've been able to use to help people and, and make a difference in some way. But isn't the core message, whether it's you or someone else, and whatever you call it, you are responsible for your own life. Your biography is not destiny, but you are responsible for your own life, and you have to take a hard-headed look at who you are, and you have to have the confidence that you can change your own life. I think it's more than that. I think it's we're all responsible to life for something more than ourselves. Right. As long as you're just focused on yourself, you're going to find depression and well, frustration. But I and mean anger. by the response for your own life in that you and what you want to do with your life may be helping others, whatever it might be. Yes. But it's your responsibility to take action to do that. 
saying it that way, that, 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 that feels like a heavy to people. I think what people will find more is when they find something they care about more than themselves, whether it be a child or a mission or their job or their career or family, when people have something more than themselves, then it's not about responsibility. It's about giving. It's about being yes. alive. There's a passion and aliveness when people find something that yeah. makes them alive. And I always say passion is the genesis of genius. Everybody has their own genius, but it only happens when that passion gets ignited. And so I'm kind of a vessel for triggering that many times. No, many times. If you can ignite the passion, then you're doing a, a hell of a thing for somebody. And, and, and not to be held back by fear. And you're going to do Oprah's Life class on Monday. Yes, I am. She's going to be here on Monday. Yeah, oh, that's you're, great. Yeah, I'm very, it'll be her first time on CBS this morning. Um, and you're doing the life class. And she was telling me about your seminar, Tony, and I, I looked at it. You're in New York tomorrow, and I want to go, but I'm so afraid. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I looked at it, and I thought, I called her and said, gosh, it looks great. You learned so much, but I'm afraid to go. The fire walking sort of freaked me out. Well, what did she tell you when she went? She said she was Oh, she said, listen, I'm only going to stay two hours, and then I'm, then I'm out of there. Yeah, 12, 12 hours, hours later. later, she was still there. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want us to get out of the seminar? Well, the one thing Let go of our fears, right? Well, it's not let go of your fears. This idea that you're fearless is a lie. Courage <laughs> requires <laughs> yes. that you're afraid, but yes. you do it anyway. It, Right. It's not courage if you're not afraid. Right. And so what you really learn to do is how to get yourself to do what's necessary in those short bursts. And the firework's just a fun metaphor for that that gets people's attention. I've yeah. done skydiving and wood breaking, all kinds of crazy things. But if you come, I promise you, if you come, you'll walk. No. Just come to come with the idea you won't walk. Come with the idea you're scared. And okay. we'll see what happens. How's that? All right. I'm going to put on my big girl pants <laughs> and mull it over. Thank you, Tony. You good can good see to see you, Tony. Thank you. Nice Always to good to see you.